right. So today, uh, we're not talking about those mathematics stuff. We're not talking about those notations. Instead, today, uh, we will talk about uh, the thing we are supposed to talking in the during the second and the third week. Uh, that's some introduction. Uh, to the background of formal specification and the relationship between uh, how can we use the formal specifications and the uh, spe to specify the requirements you know, the, the relationship between formal specification and requirements analysis okay all right Let's start from here. Hmm. Hope you can see that clearly. No. So, in order to specify some software system, maybe the functionality, the requirements, or maybe specify anything like de uh, describing anything we have uh, different ways to do that some of them are formal some of them are informal some of them maybe sitting somewhere in the middle okay so when we are using the informal way to doing the specification it's like using the natural language we'll talk about that uh, there are some disadvantages of using natural <coughs> languages. Uh, one of the most important one is maybe the ambiguous, ambiguous mm -hmm. ambiguity. So, uh, however, there are also some uh, advantages of natural language. First, everyone can understand that, right, and then you can describe more easily more with more flexibility you can describe whatever you want to describe but if the other party can get it that my uh, that depends on the person who is speaking maybe he has the ability to express everything precisely and creatively cre creatively and um, yeah so informal is in natural language and sometimes uh, even you are writing in a very formal way of the natural language it still get confused somehow you might find you might have that experience when you read a book actually the book uh, sometimes it's it's have been written by the writer and it has been uh, read by so many editors to help you to correct your maybe grammars, uh, correct the errors, the removes ambiguities. However, still you have the experience somehow. At some point, you feel feel like lost, or you feel it's not very clear when the author is describing something. So yeah, that's a problem of natural language. Especially when you are dealing with computer. Computer is stupid actually. Computer is stupid. It cannot just understand your natural language for now. It cannot understand that perfectly without the mid AI. Okay. But <coughs> but we as a human being, we like using natural language. So that create the problem there. Um, and also we have something called semi-formal specification. Uh, we've used that maybe uh, from time to time. Uh, some example of that is like those uh, data flow diagrams. Okay data flow based examples, the structured uh, system analysis, and 
the UML, some of the UML, maybe some of the diagrams is kind of sitting in the middle of a computer language, computer formal language, and your natural language. So, yeah. That's called semi formal. And we have formal master. That's what we want to learn. We want to make it formal. We want to make it mathematically, express things mathematically. So the specifications are formally defined. Uh, we have Z language. So in this in this course we will learn a lot of the notation from the Z language. Z you pronounce it the Z but yeah it's okay you can just call it the Z. And um, object constraint language OCL and also other some other way uh, requirements modeling and if you actually uh, took I think some of you took the computer arch no the software architecture course last a year ago maybe it's last spring yeah last spring so one of them uh, in one of the class uh, in one of the lecture I remember I introduced some of the formal specification notations there are a whole bunch of them just uh, in different rules they have different rules but the purpose is the same they want to make the formal specification <coughs> of the system so the definition here is the formal software specification is the specification expressed in a language. The vocabulary, syntax, and semantics are formally defined. Yeah. So when we say formally defined, here specifically we're referring to mathematically defined. Yeah, we define it mathematically. So the philosophy behind the uh, formal master is we should use uh, mathematics to record as much of the development as is practical. Yeah, I mentioned mathematically. Uh, mathematically, you can express things precisely. You can use that to prove. You can do the reasoning with mathematic rotation mathematically okay formalization is a process of making a uh, uh, vague notation precise it can be applied to software development as well as to other areas of applied mathematics so it's a process of doing this we call it formalization the formal methods leads to a more precise specification than semi-formal or informal method can. Yes. Yeah, there. Formal method has been there for decades. However here today it is still not not widely adopted by most of the companies yeah there are some reasons there you especially for the companies here in the US um, but it has uh, all those advantages but on the other side it brings the problem of the cost right as the specifications are refined, understanding is increased. Producing a formal specification focuses on the detailed system analysis, which reveals the errors and inconsistencies. Uh, that's a good thing about it. Here we mentioned historically, uh, it has not been widely used because the effort out is seen outweighed the advantages. 
but practically it is it outweighs the advantages but the research and the research shows the other way it shows formal method increases system quality and decrease the development cost why there's such conflict there like practically people think it's not practical but study shows it will help you so that's uh, that's due to the two different approaches to the formal method as I mentioned in US people are not doing that however in Europe in European countries the formal specifications is popular okay let's see what is the difference between the US way and the European way so in the Europe so formal specification they use the as a valued technique to increase system understanding and improve the specification <coughs> they were not concerned with uh, formal verification okay from those two points what we can tell is they are using formal specification to describe and help understanding the system right but not so much like the verification however in North America let's see the value of formal specification lies in the fact that verification techniques can be applied to the specification and it's providing the uh, specific correct and other verification oriented techniques so it could um, maybe result in more uh, verification reasoning stuff like you are actually prove some mathematic theory okay so the difficult level is higher right so these two approaches bring some other bring some a uh, different result in these two areas so in Europe formal specification use the industry because that's easy Right. The UK has maintained the use of formal method for safety critical system and the benefits are obvious and there is not a fear of formal method. There is not a fear since they are using it just maybe help understanding, describe stuff, right? So it's uh, widely used in industry. but not in North America so here in North America most of the work on formal method the focus on the verification so since the verification is difficult and expensive it's impractical for all but very small systems so formal methods have not been widely used in the uh, US until recently so historically it is not that popular we do have some ex uh, exceptions you know, but generally speaking it is not widely used yeah. and it has been seen as a uh, research rather than uh, technique so yeah I think this is due to uh, those two different ways people are because the formal specification it has a different functionalities for the development team it can bring you uh, yeah the most easy thing is the understanding however uh, here we emphasize too much on the verification thing um, let me give you an example okay uh, if you are um, just describe something just describe uh, a functionality like using the stat theory we learned on Monday okay like pull the other camera put all the camera that is on 
we put it put them in a set okay we can do that mathematically yeah uh, that's kind of description that's kind of uh, help you help the understanding of what you are actually doing but in terms of verification it has some maybe preconditions and post conditions you need to check like preconditions is like uh, so before that operation what conditions has to be met like there should be some uh, camera like uh, the conditions like there should be some cameras there in the building right it cannot be empty and there should be some cameras that is on and after that execution the operation the post condition might be uh, yeah all the all the cameras that is on has been putting into this set yeah. so we kind of need some verification and sometimes mathematically we need to prove that if I met this condition and this condition then I can say the other condition the third condition has been met so if you emphasize too much on that part that actually make this specification more powerful and it helps you more but it increases that cost a lot so yeah that's the problem there people think it's just not worth it. it it is good but it's not worth it yeah so here we that's the situation here um, however however due to the uh, due to the uh, changing the attitude changing in some companies some companies are actually adopting formal specifications and maybe in a, their way their own way of using that maybe they use the formal specification in some critical part of the system so that's possible but there, well, we're learning this because of those advantages that we cannot just neglect. Okay, first is increased understanding of software requirements and the design. As I mentioned, increased understanding because you express it more formally, right? Yeah, and then the potential for program verification. If, for example, it provides specification constant and complete, um, or providing a specification matches the requirement. So you can, when you are trying to verify the specification, the requirement, you can prove it mathematically. And it's better to have the ability to reason about the specification. Yeah. Like I mentioned reasoning. Later, later in this course, in this semester, we will learn how can we do the reasoning, like the logic thing I mentioned in the first lecture. We use the logic, we use we use the mathematic notation to reason to prove some uh, condition. And specifications can be automatically processed. They can be executed or animated to get prototype okay one of the important reason that formal specification uh, may become recently is start to become a little bit more popular than before the third one it can be automatically processed you know that AI currently AI technology it is developing it is uh, it is very hot area for the AI let's do to this a lot of reason actually first it's the algorithm is improving and then the hardware is improving the uh, parallel computing ability of doing parallel computing like uh, we can calculate a lot of things concurrently with the GPU without GPU so GPU you already you can have a uh, maybe thousands of cores to help you doing the calculation 
so that that all of them and also the improvement in the machine learning uh, those the the the, ma the mass be the mathematics behind the machine learning okay all those things uh, actually gives you the uh, ability to develop a very intelligent system and this is a part of it as well if you want if you want the, the computer to do the work for you 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 got to let the computer understand the work first right one way we can make the computer to understand the natural language but since every human being has some problem understand natural language as well because uh, what I mentioned maybe you get it differently we don't want computer have that issue then we do the formal specification and then the computer can somehow execute and create a prototype automatic automatically right there are a whole bunch of groups they are they're trying to do research on how can we make the computer doing the programming it sounds horrible because it may replace replace some uh, human jobs right but that's the trend that's the trend people are doing that but in order to do that you need to let the computer understand your requirements yes yes the computer can do can do the programming okay finally it can do the programming but it don't it don't know what it doesn't know is what to program what functionalities should I implement but the formal specification is a good way to tell the computer yeah. and it can help you to create a reliable system yeah here we also mentioned some reasons uh, it's not being widely used historically it's not being widely used in the US yeah. it's uh, difficult to show that the high cost of developing this specification will really reduce the overall software development cost okay, I, I believe people tried that and they find out yeah it is really a high cost there and formal method appear difficult yeah yeah most of the time if you're not taking this course or if your software engineering program doesn't have this course this is not understandable for most of the software engineers okay uh, I don't know if we have an undergraduate version of formal specification or not yeah so mostly you will find software engineers so the engineers don't know the specification techniques because it's it somehow take time to learn take time to apply and take time to execute yeah. and you need to know uh, discrete mathematics and logic to understand that actually wiped out a lot of uh, maybe interests from a lot of engineers somehow most uh, SWEs are inexperienced in this area so formal specification language appear difficult to understand yeah so the cost is high not only we take time to write specification to execute to verify the specification it's also because the people there do not know it that if you want to use that you have to rehire people or training your your workforce training your employees that's huge cost yeah yeah because most of the company they just want when they are hiring they just want to find someone that they can use immediately they don't they don't like training for most of the companies yes but for bigger companies yeah sometimes those companies has a vision that they want have their own techniques so that they do some training yeah but most of time no They don't familiar and don't want to fund the project using them. 
and some classes of system are difficult to describe using uh, formal specifications yeah that's yeah like user interfaces uh, parallel systems user interfaces is parallel system uh, it is a problem it is a problem but people are doing some uh, uh, techniques in formal specification trying to to deal with the parallel system that's a matter of uh, that's a matter of time we will have that but the user interface if you think about that maybe there's a bigger gap there if you want to specify the user interface with uh, some uh, specify the user interface mathematically hmm yeah it's because uh, it's more subjective things there, more subjective things there when you design the interface. Yeah. And software is actually, uh, um, since it's uh, purely abstract, it is running on the machine. It's not like if you get a mouse here or if you have a pen here you can tell if it's of good quality immediately right if I have a pen here I can write and then I will know if it's a smooth or not but software you have to run it maybe test it for a while and uh, more users need to be involved then you can tell the quality of the system so sometimes it's hard to just tell the quality at the first place then people will think uh, people may think okay if I, this is a product I use for most specifications this is for a product I just developed but without any specifications maybe in the beginning when using start using those two products you feel no difference right and the one that we're not using the formal specifications may have a shorter cycle of uh, development it can go to the market more quickly right then people will adopt that it it can uh, occupy all the whole, the whole market like when i have this app here i will not take another one sometime a lot of app is like that so when that happens, yeah, that kind of unfair for the real high quality system there. Yeah. Ignorance of formal master, there have been hundreds of large scale system formally specified, mostly in Europe. So people may not be aware of that because uh, most of the companies, the company next door, next building, they are not using formal methods. Why should I use that? And the reason for the past two decades, most of research on formal methods in the U.S. have been on not notations and techniques and very little on the tool support which is needed before large scale spaces can be developed and, uh, from specific specification from a master widely used so we don't have enough tools to support our modeling our uh, execution the verification with uh, formal specifications if you need tools you need to take time to develop that but who would do that if nobody's using that so that's another problem and there has been a misunderstanding of the ramifications of the practical adoption of formal methods so there's a belief that formal methods are software engineering uh, yeah, actually, uh, yeah, it is a part of engineering, software engineering. However, it is more, uh, more of uh, a matter of a mathematic and a matter of uh, of the management, actually.
and they also mentioned the OCL uh, UML so that's kind of helping yeah. but since the agile the agile model is really popular agile process is really popular in companies so that's uh, another thing you do not we, we just want we just care about the prototype we want prototype we can get prototype as quickly as we can so formal specification is actually somehow against that so yeah <coughs> but but the time is changing the situation is changing as i mentioned there are different factors that may make this uh, formal specification very popular later first is the ai technology right then it would be a uh, it would be uh, the tools people will start to develop more tools so that uh, it will be less cost to apply the formal method right and also it does have those uh, advantages which will help uh, and I would say not say most of system but some specific system like security sensitive system they are more important uh, with the formal specifications yeah right so it's still important that's why we think it's still very important to use this formal specific to learn this uh, technique this uh, theories of formal specification So I've covered that somehow in our pre in our discussion in previous weeks. So I won't specify that a lot. Just let you know, kind of motivated to uh, learn the formal specification. It's not useless. Instead, it will be very useful in the future. okay and then we talk about the requirements okay so i believe you all have a course called uh, requirements engineering right so can anybody tell me what is your takeaway from that course <coughs> what do you actually what did you actually do in that course I got the domain specification of the system that you were designing and then code to those or develop the documentation for those uh, requirements and then prepare an SRS form for a design. So definitely the long and complicated art of figuring out what pack you're doing before you actually do it. Yeah. yeah. Figuring out. So what what is the key part of figuring out that? Observation uh, and prototyping. Gathering the Yeah. The different ways. Yeah, different ways to to figure out those requirements, right? Uh, prototype is one thing and somehow uh, you enhance the communication between uh, with the clients those are things so uh, here we have some a uh, little bit refresher here so we're talking about <laughs> the problem domain and the solution domain uh, solu solution system have you you know that concept from this uh, requirements engineering yeah so the <coughs> problem domain is actually the the part of the universe which within which the problems we're trying to solve within which the problem exists yeah and the part of the world within which the new solution system will operate and will produce uh, the required effects and the operating environment things it includes the 
environment within which the new system will operate. So <coughs> these two concepts, the, the problem domain and the solution system, they are uh, something we, we need to talk together. Because uh, uh, we cannot just talk about domain without this system, because uh, we are talking about domain requirements, and then the final product is the system. So the relationship here, the problem domain and the solution system interact and their relationship can be uh, pictured like this. This interface, we use the uh, solution system to run on the problem domain, to solve the problems in the problem domain through that interface. So that's a summer refresher. Yeah. So uh, what's important is we need to figure out what the system should do in the problem domain requirements. And we start by uh, starting the problem domain and producing a description of it <coughs> and a statement of effects that the new solution system should produce in the uh, problem domain. Still requirements. And we then specify the behavior that is required of the new system, such as such it will uh, produce the required effects in the problem domain. For all these things here, it's kind of match what it kind of match the uh, advantages of the formal method, right? You want to specify. Uh, you want to describe description of it yeah. you want to learn what you want to do so the requirements and the requirements is a feature of the system or description of something the system is capable of doing in order to fulfill the system's purpose so that's a kind of definition we all know that So specify the purpose of the system without how it is to be built. Okay, so how it is to be built is more detailed. Like here are some examples. A lift <coughs> will only reverse direction when stopped at the floor. So this is a requirement. This is a requirement. Another thing is here, when the lift is within 20 centimeters vertically of the sensor's nominal position, the sensor send a high signal, otherwise low signal. Yeah, this is a this is n we cannot just call it the requirements, right? This describes the characteristic of the problem domain and is not a requirement. So, can you tell the difference between these two? Those two example. Uh, one gives mathematics. It's less ambiguous because of that. Uh, it's using centimeters instead of just saying it'll only reverse direction when stopped at a floor. Whereas it's, it's describing it's too implementation specific. Yeah. yeah. Yes. So when you talk about requirements, sometimes it's not that deep into into the implementation. Uh, um, if you think about here, this functionality, the lift will reverse direction when you stop at the floor. Okay. However, to implement that, we can have the flexibility of <coughs> different 
different method, right? We can maybe we can implement the system with different program languages, right? Implement system with different architecture, right? So uh, when we talk about requirements, those implementation details are usually not included there, because uh, we can have to this system that is totally different from each other based on different technologies different uh, platforms but still the, they can meet the same set of requirements on the problem domain okay so that's something uh, we need to pay attention to And this is also something you need to know that functional requirements and non-functional requirements, those are two types. I think you all know that, right? Can someone give an example of functional requirements and non-functional requirements? So what is functional requirements? Just some example. <coughs> Yeah, yeah. What the system should do, and what is the what the system should what what give it more specific? Yeah, like if I have a if I have a student management student uh, the course selection system, course selection reg registration system. What is the example of functional requirements there? Whether he's able to, he or she is able to register for courses, search for classes, the display of the yeah. there is a user friendly. Yeah, search. Let's say yeah. search. Okay. Register, yes, yeah. Register, search, maybe aid, drop, things like that. So let's say about search. Search is a good example of the functional requirements, right? So it meets the these points here. <coughs> like describe how the system should behave when create a certain stimuli. <coughs> certain stimuli means me, uh, the student should be able to search and maybe click a button or somehow that's a stimuli or give uh, this command to the system and it's describe required behavior in terms of required activities what tasks or functions the system must do yeah, and the requirements that can be met by appropriate behavior on the part of solution system. They may be expressed at various levels of abstraction. A student should, should be able to search. Okay, the student should be able to search when he s hit the search button. Or you can see, a student should be able to search with the name of the course or with the number of the course. and can be maybe expressed in terms of relation relationships between input and output from the solution system. Here's another example with a user select the modify boat details. The option system option the system the this option the system will prompt them to enter the boat's name. So it's like this like search when the user select search, it will search with a name or something somehow. And how about non-functional requirements? Let's say something about search. Exactly. That's what I'm looking for. So, so search must be completed, return result within some certain amount of time. So that's a performance. That's a performance. Yeah. Let's see what are those non-functional requirements. Which are here, this uh, SCRU is a good example here. Uh, help you remember this non-functional. It's a speed capacity, reliability, <coughs> and usability. Okay, 
So usability, it can be <coughs> understand as maybe ease of use, or so performance. Uh, maybe some system can help improve the user's performance um, in some tasks because the UI design is great or something. Yeah. So it's the constraints that describe the restrictions on the system that limit our choices for constructing the solution. The parameters of functionality in, in that they determine how quickly, how reliable these functions operate and often referred to as non-functional or uh, non-behavior requirements. So remember this, SCRU, speed, capacity, reliability. Speed is uh, um, the throughput in terms of uh, response times, most of the time response times. Capacity is a quantity of data that can be stored within the system, such matters uh, and such matters as the number of users can be handled simultaneously yeah especially when you when we're talking we talk we talk a lot about with big data right so this capacity is one important feature in the non-functional requirement reliability the proportion of time is the system performing correctly yeah if you if you actually are uh, Actually, uh, if you think about a phone system, like your, your cell phone calling system, what you may not realize is actually their calling system may be scheduled or accidentally done. Maybe for, for <coughs> like 20 hours or so every year. Okay. However, if this 20 hours is distributed to every user, you may get even unnoticeable amount of time that the phone system is not working. Maybe when you call your friends, somehow you get one second, the voice is off, or half a second, the voice is off. You may not even realize that. And But if, if, I, if that number is too big, it will have the influence on the reliability. So reliability is one thing. You can require system to not going down for more than maybe 20 hours every year. Yeah, we can have some acceptable range of the system is down. And if the system is of higher reliability, it should have less downtime, less non-responsible time reliability there yeah, you don't have to be to be a reliable system you don't have to be like on there hundred percent of the time yeah there's gonna be a range that is acceptable and usability so the way in which usability might test it and the then catch the requirements in those terms for example a computer uh, literate race officer should be able to learn to enter finish times and output race result with an error rate of less than one less than one in 20 volts so this kind of thing is more like what I, I mentioned the ease of use the critical the most key part the ease of use for the usability ease of use and what the usability has influence on the user's performance, right? Things like that. Easier. If it's easier to use, the user will have more higher performance. We can maybe finish a thousand. We can maybe I can process a thousand. I can grade thousand of homework. No, I, I can grade all the students' homework within an hour if the system is well designed. However, if I have to go to this page and jump out back to that page and go back to another student page again it, it it's uh, not like the usability is not very well so that's the usability so together this thing speed capacity reliability usability they call it, they're called the non-functional requirements okay 
and also design uh, constraints. So these are maybe not, these are not what the thing we call the requirements, but it's easy to get confused. So here, design constraints. In the textbook, it's called uh, implementation and design directive. So are the true non-functional, um, wait. So they uh, affect how the system is built, but not what it does. So a useful test is to ask whether under normal usage it would be apparent to the eventual user of the system whether the requirement has been met. Um, let me see. I think design constraints is not the requirements. I don't know why the sentence is here. be apparent in the requirement is a uh, design constraint okay so we actually should um, distinguish it yeah so here we still think that's a part of requirements but we should distinguish it from the from the requirements we're talking about they are non-functional functional so the design constraints here here is uh, a way to to ask whether it is constraints or the uh, maybe uh, true requirements. So a useful test is to ask whether uh, it will be apparent to the inventory users of the system whether the requirement has been met. So for the constraint, it's not very easy for the end user to test it. Okay. like here some examples are here so the system must be implemented in three main modules one for each of the main functions detections recording and statistical analysis user cannot tell that whether you are implementing that in the three module architecture or whether you are implementing that without any architecture so the the user cannot tell them so then it probably should be called uh, design constraints instead of instead of uh, like the requirements we were talking here okay and the uh, yeah the second type affect the structure only indirectly by considering <coughs> the pr pr process or technology used to develop it. You know, the system might be developed using object-oriented design techniques. Right? So that's not the requirements you can usually get <coughs> from uh, the client. Right? The client will, will care about no, functional requirements maybe mostly and they, they also care about the performance of the system like those three those four things reliability usability capacity speed yeah but here um, it also has influence this constraints will have those influence eventually on the non-functional and functional requirements like if you are using if you are developing within one module or if you are developing in three main modules 
it will have the influence eventually on the performance of the system or if you are using object oriented or not maybe you're using Java or using C++ it will eventually have some influence on your functionality on function requirements and non-functional requirements however we should distinguish it as design constraints okay yeah here are some uh, common matters here target machines upon which the solution system must operate an online architecture distributed or local mm -hmm. that's maybe not the customers or the customer care and the uh, <coughs> what package should be used software package right. those are examples and also commercial constraints that's another thing so the requirements that provide the client answers to when will I get it and how much will it cost apart from what will you do yeah that's the commercial constraints um, yeah like like the uh, design constraints the commercial constraints is uh, also it is they are all parts of the requirements but just not the part that the customers care too much about so no, not no the uh, design constraints maybe the customers not care too much about it but here is yeah the cost the customer will care about it but it's not um, within the uh, maybe if we're talking about because uh, finally we're talking about specifications those are not the things that is specified by the formal method okay they often picked up while investigating the other requirements yeah. but they are readily identified and preference <coughs> okay so this this is uh, some requirements that is also is different from the traditional requirements we're talking about it's just some it is also a part of requirement but it's a requirement that it's optional you can implement it or not but it may be good if you have resource to implement those for example uh, if we design a system, a networking system, uh, maybe the requirements specified, okay, we need a system that supports IPv4. IPv4, okay. However, the system may be end up with supporting both IPv4 and IPv6. Right, the IPv6 may not be useful at this time, but if you think about future, IPv6 may be useful since they are not a whole lot of IP address is not enough there and a lot of other issues performance issues for IP version so this is a non mandatory requirements if they can be made a little no cost they should be included all the architecture of the system should be designed so they could be included in future versions So uh, that's uh, some review of the requirements because uh, most of the time we are using the formal specification to specify the requirements and to verify the requirements. That's why this is how uh, we uh, we have refreshed a little bit about your requirements engineering stuff. Yeah, and this this uh, chat is actually a pretty good thing here yeah uh, so this is everything 
basically the ER uh, problem domain description like the how the word is and the requirements as I mentioned those functional requirements and those traditional non-functional requirements like speed, capacity, result, uh, reliability, usability they are all belongs to the requirements however there are some other maybe constraints design constraints and commercial constraints they are also some parts they are also belongs to uh, the requirement however uh, they are not like the <coughs> the uh, the thing that we're very interested in using the formal method to specify like you specify how much money you spend it's actually yeah it doesn't matter that much in the formal master however however those functional requirements those uh, performance thing yeah we might want to specify that yeah, so that's uh, requirements So this is another slide talk about the customer requirements and the specifications. The content of uh, the requirements documentation. Here we have a uh, functional, non-functional goals, reference to data implementation, the design directives. Those are the documentation. I believe you learned how you document those uh, functionality, fun those requirements in the requirements engineering course. And the deficiencies in the statement of requirements, yeah, we kind of cover them. Vagueness, incompleteness, contradiction, mixed requirements, mixed all uh, the above requirements content, like design constraints. You don't want to mix it with the non-functional requirement, right? And naivety underestimate or um, overestimate power of the computer underestimate our budget ambiguity makes a level of abstraction so that's a problem when we're writing a documentation for the requirements that's why we here we want a good system specification which is opposite of all this above we don't want this is what we don't want weakness contradiction Incompleteness, blah blah. And this opposite of this, we are create a good system specification. And a good system specification also need to have a customer understandability. Okay, here this this concept. Partitionability is, is in, this concept is important. Please remember this. Okay, so there are two different kind of uh, partitioning. It's uh, horizontally and vertically. Horizontally means uh, you separate the spaces into functional requirements, non-functional requirements, uh, those data, hardware, and goals. So you sp you you separating them, and you make validation a more manageable tasks. And the vertical partitioning is you organizing <coughs> the software specification into series of levels each of which correspond to a level of abstraction in the statement of requirements so this uh, facilitates the decomposing of the specification into levels that correspond to the development of stuff for example the system architecture only sees the highest level of detail so if you are took the architecture course it's more understandable here. This uh, very different levels, uh, partitioning them into different levels when you specify the system. And here, horizontally, is what we just talked about functional, non functional. Okay. 
and those uh, design constraints, data requirements, and requirements for the hardware. Maybe it's part of non-functional. So we separate them, separate this, this, uh, separate this uh, requirements into different kinds. Yeah, and vertically is we specify, we describe the system in different level. Maybe the top level is the most understandable because uh, you just describe search. Okay, second level maybe some more constraints there. A search with what kind of database? A search return or search just uh, maybe more details. If you go down, go down, the lowest level has the most details. Okay, so that's two different kind of partitioning. When you are specify, uh, when it makes a, uh, when you specify the system, and a good system specification have a good partitioning there. Okay, remember those two, horizontal and vertical. Yeah, so this is uh, requirements analysis, <coughs> the steps, and system specification. Uh, you can read it, I won't uh, talk too much on it because I believe you or have learned that. Yeah, we finally reached this. Actually, all the things we've talked today, everything I'm um, mention is to reach this point. Why use uh, mathematics for the system specification? Okay, so it, generally speaking, simply speaking, it help you overcome all the bad qualities of the uh, s when you specify the system, and help you create a good quality specification of that system okay first the requirements analysis is difficult and yes that is most difficult in the entire development process and mathematic has a number of properties which are desirable for the system specification to for a good system specification yeah it's easy to represent levels of abstraction right substitution mathematically you can just use some some just this a to refer to maybe a function a lot of things there and it's easy to reason in mathematics yeah you can prove and mathematic has a well-defined ambiguous mathematic can be <coughs> used to model reality, yeah. Uh, so the engineering process is mathematics to model reality. As uh, soft engineering, to be a true engineering discipline, because yeah, there are some argue that if it, if soft engineering is actually in engineering, right? But if we are doing this mathematically, we can call it a true engineering discipline. Yeah. Uh, however, unfortunately, some companies are not doing that because of due to the test, but this is still behind the soft engineering. We have this formal specification, mathematically specify the system. Yeah. Just people are not using that somehow. Yeah. Okay, mathematic can be used to um, suppress unnecessary detail, use abstraction to hide details. A good specification notation should be abstract enough to leave the system designer with a large solution space of uh, possible designs. Be kind of like the first point there, abstraction. Yeah. And mathematic is constant. It is stable notation, unlike many of the notation for specific specification and design that come and go. Especially for natural language, because uh, maybe there are some word, maybe it's it is of good meaning at some point in the history, 
and then things changed. It become uh, some some related bad related to some bad things. Yeah, if you if you have uh, you can have more examples. Um, yeah, especially if you Twitter a lot of things. Yeah. Okay. So that's why we use metric for system specification. And from next class, we will actually start our uh, learn the notations of the formal specification here, week four. Uh, yeah. This calculus. We will learn some logic. This those notations, negation, conjunctions, and this uh, equality, yeah, those things. We will start, actually start learning that next week, okay. Alright. What's that? Is there 